Hello all, this is Alice and today, magically sort of on time, here we are with part 2 of the first day of the 2004 Pathologic Alpha. There's not much to say here, unlike in the previous part, aside from the usual apologies for the tongue tying and the fact that the dialogues are making this a bit slower than usual. But I still hope that you find these bits and pieces of pathologic lore that we are encountering interesting enough to go through them until we actually get to do stuff. So, without further ado, Alice plays Pathologic, The Bachelor Alpha, Day 1, Part 2, in which our doctor's round continues. Before we go to the rest of the town, we are going to... Yeah, Day 1, I forgot. We are going to visit Eva for some more info. And then we'll see. By the way, uh, yeah, that's the... Mm, okay, so that's the mistress's uh, cemetery. I did check and... Uh, I think it's... I don't remember if it's Nina's or Victoria's tomb. Uh, it doesn't have any um, milk or bread as it tended to have and it tends to happen in the released versions. So yeah, not uh, going through there yet. Let's uh, refill the water bottles. Because I think I have quite a few so far. And you know, will know that water bottles always come in, come in handy. Provisions. Yeah. Not as much as I thought, but we have quite a few. Let's see what happens when we talk to uh, this young lady. It's not every day you see a metropolitan celebrity. I hear you're getting closer to solving the mystery of the death of living beings. Uh, I'm doing my job. Georg is waiting for you all night long. Have you talked to him yet? He's wearing a crown now. Uh, I know how to find your ruler. Thanks. So, let's see. Ah, more trash cans! Yeah. You're going to say, Alice, you're the worst. And I will say, I know my dears, I know. Matt! I already told you at the very beginning. Both a same a safe scammer and and an absolute raccoon. But anyhow, let's go check on Eva before we go on A trip through the whole town on Gorkon. Hello, darling. I'm glad you're back again. Okay, so tell me, dear Eva, who can know about the circumstances of Simon's death? Oh, honey, <laughs> thanks. I know who can tell. Recently, the mask showed a pantomime of this topic. The sinister murder of the king, the sorcerer Kuron. Mark promised that there will be a puppet show on the same topic today. Now, of course, both the pantomime and the puppet show will be cancelled. And yet there's a, a little bit that links us yet again with um, a technical demo because 
as you all will remember and if you don't remember that might be because you haven't seen my video on the technical demo mm, please go and check it it's uh, with all its mistakes i think it's a good video but uh, Kuron is one of the characters and that is mentioned in the technical demo and um, I theorize that it could be the technical demo's version of either Sticky or Rubin. And anyhow, uh, today, and uh, Naya, who's Mark? Oh! Mark uh, drives dolls incomparably. He's a jack of all trades. Shows tricks, swallows swords, predicts fate by cards, and he also directs pantomimes of masks. What is it? Amazing, prophetic pantomimes. Only the most desperate gather for them. Previously, the whole city was breaking down, but when it became clear how it ended, there were fewer people willing. Now the theater is empty in the evenings. Uh, I do not understand. And how does it end? Two ancient masks summon a volunteer from the crowd who wants to find out his fate. Mark looks at these hands, then raises his open palms and shows them to the mask. They act out the improvisation, without uttering a word. They act out the whole future of this person, and it always comes true. Can you imagine? Where is this theater located? In the core, the very heart of the city, the central quarter. Only the theater is closed now. It will open only in the evening. And even that, don't know. After everything that happened today, no matter how poor Mark is accused. I'll check on him. Thanks. Eva let sleep that a certain buffoon named Mark the Immortal was one of those who foresaw, or maybe directed, the death of the venerable elder. The theater will open again at uh, 6 o'clock. They are probably washing the blood now. Daniel, please. Do you know that Simon has been murdered? Yes, they are already talking on, on no corners. It doesn't fit in my head. It's terrible, right? Georgi asked me to figure the killer. He sent the praises of my analytical art. And you agreed? Yes, without hesitation. Why? It is interesting to know who benefited from his death. He was killed a few hours before I, I arrived. A strange coincidence, don't you think? I'm scared. No one has died here for many years. Do you, do you have any instructions? Who could kill an immortal person? Recently, Simon was visited at night by some alien. He got into it secretly. I think it was a, a woman. F female? Yes. Those who saw her were surprised. Even frightened. W what? Well, maybe it was a thing from the step under female guys. I heard it is called devouring. The inner piece of the horns cannot be penetrated, so she had supernatural powers. Could it be that she drank the blood from him? <laughs> the, the picture became clearer. I'm glad you're back again. I'm glad to see you too. Tell me, Eva, about the local society. Is there anyone worth getting to know? Society. There's an interesting society here. Frankly speaking, not provincial in the full sense of the word. You won't get bored with us. 
it's worth starting with. Oh yes, well, for example, two women have been waiting for you since yesterday. Both are very different, and at the same time, subtly familiar. How are they different? One is a little girl, the other is a fully grown woman. Both bear the imprint of power, education, and family tradition affect them. Both are able to see th things hidden from ordinary mortals. Why were they waiting for me? Don't know, but certainly not what I need from you. They're probably going to involve you in, in an intrigue. The elder is a gloomy person in her own right, eyes like a dead woman's, character in, in general too. <laughs> and the younger one, the younger has eternal pranks on, in her mind, but you need to play carefully. This is a dangerous girl. Will you tell me their names? I'll name it. The eldest is the hostess Katarina, the wife of Sabarov, our commander. She's a morphine addict, almost never leaves the, the fort. Fort is a suburb of Opiovna. Of Again, another aside, sorry for the mispronunciation. Opovniak. It stands in the Tanner's Quarter. Well, and the youngest? The youngest is little Victoria Olginskaya, otherwise Capella. The daughter of Big Blood and the dead mistress Victoria. I won't gossip about her out of respect of her mother and out of fear of her father. I'll get to know them. I'll talk to uh, I talked to Georgi Kane. I still can't move away. Simon was like that too extravagant? Simon is just frightening and unpredictable, but Simon brings joy, and Georgi brings anxiety. I'm afraid of Georgi. He's noble and honest. You can trust him, but I try not to show my face to him. Why? His character is unbridled. He's subject to fits of insanity and uh, sometimes it seems that someone else is taking advantage of them. Passion, and always passion. Guys, it's action, his actions. It's certainly beautiful. It's just scary that such a person is invested with unlimited power. <laughs> how do people tolerate such rulers? But how else? And people love the kings. Find more rulers who can easily ring Hold on the city, give the world a new river, or rent a carnival all month long. But it is better to love Georgi from afar. People say that there's a raven sitting inside his head, and instead of a heart, he has the jaws of a cobra. Fine. <laughs> Eva, tell me more about Julia. What kind of person is she? Do you like her? I'm just wondering what you think of her. Listen to me, Daniel. You have to be very careful now in choosing your likes and dislikes. There can be no secrets in a town like this, you know. Everything you do and say immediately becomes public domain. Many people will try to win you over to their side. Be careful in choosing friends. Are you hinting at Julia? Julia is a good girl. I will never become like her. She's quiet and modest, but she's perfect. She has such a special spiritual purity, you know, and strictness. She asks herself more sternly than everyone else, and she thinks very interestingly. I'll never learn like that, but she's in danger. Which one? I don't want you to take part in her fate, I mean, I'm not saying she's going to ask you for protection on purpose, but what if you offer it yourself? Not necessary. This is a danger that cannot be adverted. 
It's personal. No blood test to burn, just I don't have the right to say much. Of course, I won't interfere in anything. Lies. Well, no, we're going to interfere, but... Puriva... Uh, needs some relief. I'm glad you're back again. I just wanted to look at you again, Ibayan. I have things to do. And... Off we go. And... Here we save again. Save day one. Eva. Zero two. And it's... Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you all. Because we have two new annotations. No. Actually four. A clot. The mansion of the Olginski family. Manufacturers, industrialists and money lenders. Now the family is headed by 50 year old Vladislav, whom the people call Heavy Blood for his cruel nature. Big Blood's daughter, Little Capella, no, Little Victoria, nicknamed Capella, Duchess in this wing of the clot. Someone in this city knew about my future visit even when I didn't know about it myself. It seems that this also applies to Capella. And. Katerina Saburova, the commander's wife, knows more about me than I do myself. If it's not a bluff, then it's a piece of intrigue, because I don't believe in mysticism. And since there are no benevolent intrigues, the meeting does not promise to be pleasant. The Road The Saburov family has lived here since the, build, uh, since the founding of the city. The once powerful and numerous clan consists only of two people, the commander deprived of real power and his dying wife. And now they make it, and, and this a thousand times more tragic. And now I might be stunning these two a little bit more. Because it's just... Uh, Imagine that uh, there were many, many Saburovs that the good old commander had brothers and sisters and then they all went and died. And now it's only him and his wife and neither of them have the chance. for the family they wanted. And uh, yeah, we're going to see our favorite drunkards to see if we have something for them or they have something for us. Uh, hello! Shall we switch? Mm. Why not? So, let's get ourselves a tourniquet or as they call it here, a rubber harness. And here we go. We're going to be checking first on the old games case. Let's see what this lady has to tell us. <sighs> People are already tired of endless construction. I want peace. Why? What? You have so many build, uh, things being built? Not that much, but at the same time it feels like the world is changing too fast. The rulers invite architects from the capital, they put everything on their ears here. Children have fun and we have flower. <laughs> you have a very neat town. I haven't seen anything like this for a long time. And off we go. Some trust searching. Other people do so searching. I do trust searching. And it makes me happy. Bottle filling time. Uh, 
and it looks like there's a huge amount of doggos this time in the morning I love picking bottles and I love filling bottles I'm the most well hydrated man in the town non Gorkon I'll probably be dying soon of the sand pass but not of the hydration and we're going to visit our man big blood and of course I got from the wrong side and it's fun because yeah this is it just me or this design looks a bit more like the design that would later be used in pathologic 2 maybe it's just me bachelor dankowski please see the state of the industry we have our own rules here uh, what is the state of the industry have mercy this is a complex undertaking a whole complex with a thousand year history how to manage such a colossus a special a special approach is needed do you understand me emissary uh, it's pointless to object i see we don't understand each other this is a very special project very special and that means that it is naive to approach it with generally accepted standards in every way. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Uh, I don't know what my dear children have told you. Anyway, I closed the termitary for technological reasons. You have nothing to inspect there. I'm taking unexpected measures. What do your children have to do with it? They are completely out of hand. It seems that they were going to ask you for help. I suspect that this is due to the measures I have taken. I emphasize administrative measures. The mob must be kept in line. Uh, I don't understand anything. Maybe you take me for someone else? But are you a medical scientist from the capital? With certain reservations, yes. The termitary is my patrimony. I am the absolute master of the workers. If they want to rebel, I will prevent it. This city is already restless. If the striking factory people are added to this bacchanalia, everything will finally fall into tatters. <sighs> Don't worry, I have nothing to do with the sanitary inspection. It will be hard to get life back on track. Why do you think Simon Cain died? Uh, how could someone who tried to rule with a power no, with one power not die? This is not possible with us. Balance is provided by equilibrium. Uh, did Simon's behavior cross your interests? Have mercy. I said that when a person takes on too much, He's crushed by circumstances. That's how life works. 
However, uh, people claim that circumstances had no power over Simon. This fact does not seem to be questioned. Simon lived for a very long time. Very. He was a decent man. But long doesn't mean forever, right? No one is to blame for his death. Examine the body, and you will understand that everything happened by itself. Kain won't let me examine the body. It's temporary. Family tradition. He doesn't deceive you. He believes in murder himself. If he has to admit that Simon died simply from death, most likely, he will immediately go to his father's fathers. Can't take the shock. Strange. Georgi Kane did not impress me as a sensitive person. Should I trust what Georgi Kane said? Mm. Who can I trust at all? But he's characterized by a certain integrity. You can criticize his style of government, but his principles are all right. He is sincere enough. Is he really so shocked by the death of his elderly brother? And you? I had certain hopes for him. My whole life's work depended on the possibility of Simon's existence. Right to the point. Georgi feels exactly the same as you. It's strange how your destinies have mirrored. Is that so? Make no mistake. He didn't like his brother, honored, but did not love. But he will not accept his loss. See what a paradox. Yes. Gives ground for reflection. And uh, what do you think about Rubin? How to say, the best student of the old Buddha. I respect him, but I try not to have anything to do with him. Why? He's a stubborn, self-willed, with character. He will do what he sees fit, even if the stake is on his head. It is impossible to find a common language with him, does not obey anyone, does not listen to anyone's authority except the teacher, but now even that is not there. What do you mean? Isidore is dead. They found him with a hole in his chest at dawn today. They say the same killer. Didn't you know? No. How did this happen? No one knows. A suspicious coincidence of circumstances. Rubin is prowling the slums, trying to find out something. Somehow it has to do with the way of life. And the wound is suggestive. Involuntarily, you begin to believe in these step fairy tales. By the way, um, I think there's uh, several... Uh, mentions of the way of life and I do imagine it is the king. What about his wound? They say it's like being pierced through the claw of a very large animal. The body was hidden somewhere again or Rubin took it. You can't make it out. All threads are broken. Not happening. And, uh, well, there's uh, some mention to Capella, but uh, we're going to visit her first. Ah, here she is, baby girl. She's 
look into what was going around. If my mother were alive now, she would take the reins of power into her own hands. Even her father would have listened to her. And now, who will take care of us? Certainly not Katerina. The mistress is to torture her last hour is near. Uh, okay, so what does Katerina have to do with it? She's scared like a child herself. And it also seems to me that she's been deceived. Yes, her predictions are coming true, as before. But there's more and more noise in them. As if every word needs to be understood in a figurative sense. Does she predict the future? She sees... In general terms, she always tells the truth. I'm sorry, I love a good pun where I see, when I see it and I have to choose this, in this answer. I see. <sighs> Tell me, did my older brother or father ask you for anything? Oh, oh, oh what? In this case, listen to my advice. Do not rush to do what they ask you to do. You see, uh, sometimes they seem heartless, especially that, but they are not. You have no idea how hard it is to manage our, our artists and people. The burden of power leaves its mark on the soul. What were they going to ask me for? Can I tell you a secret? But you must promise me that my father won't find about this. I'm afraid that Lothar Vladislav already knows this secret and that's why I wanted to ask you for help. You swear you won't tell my father? I, I promise. The word of Daniel Dankowski. There is fermentation in the territory. It's too bad that everything coincided with the death of Simon because there are not many living creatures living in the termitary, but only one. It's a crowd. When she's in a sleepy state, she's safe. But when she's worried, it is impossible to predict her behavior. Therefore, the termitary is blocked by my father's servants. Uh, and what? They are capable of a lot. If they work out, it's like dangerous animals escaping from a zoological garden. So several people escape from the cemetery, but there are few of them and they do not pose any danger because they're scared and divided. That's why I th uh, what I think, and my brother or father think differently. How? My brother only knows about one runaway butcher. Father doesn't know that they've run away at all. He's terribly angry that they reveled at such an inopportune moment. And in anger, the father's terrible. He does not control his feelings at all. The brother wants his this fugitive to die. He's afraid that otherwise he may excite the frightened townspeople and then the end of the world will begin. But uh, how can he scare them? You say they're scared themselves. That's the whole point. You have no idea what kind of creatures these pictures are. They're like animals. They have such a wild talent. They infect everyone around with their mood. When they are calm, animals are calm too. And people too. But when they are furious, in general, it can all end terribly. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to comment on this, but I think I better shouldn't. So, what do you want from me? My brother and I know where the butcher is hiding. It's such a house. Not a good house in general, 
My brother and I won't be alone with India. They know who we are. And they can let you in. There's something like something like a flop house. Try to make him go to the step somehow, this picture. Otherwise brother will kill him. Do you want me to take him to the step or what? You'll come up with something. What if it turns out? Tell him that he's in danger, that they're already going to kill him. Okay, show me where this house is. <laughs> the baby! And the baby has almost caught the killer. It remains only to find the suspect and interrogate him before the eccentric canes have attacked up him. A runaway butcher, rumored to be quite suitable for the role of an ogre, is hiding in this house. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not going to say anything, anything at all regarding all this. And yeah, to find out if the killer is hiding in a poorhouse. Let's see if Capella has something more to tell us. How inopportunely everything happened. Do you want to... Did you want to talk to me about something? I'm seized with a premonition of terrible events. Last time it was like that, when mom died. I felt the time very keenly at that time, right up to the hour when it would happen. Uh, oh, why are you talking about this? It seems to me that Simon's death is a sign. The worst thing will happen today, closer to midnight. And you know what else? W what? M my feeling is connected with you. It seems to me that you will not live to see tomorrow. Oh, if I could see everything that is ahead of us as clearly as my mother was able to do. Or at least Katerina. And my vague feelings only confuse you. I'd better be quiet. On the contrary, tell me more. It's not every day that you can look into your near future. By all means, by all means, talk to Katerina. Maybe she can help you. Suddenly she feels the same as I do. But she will probably tell you where and who will cause your death. Uh, okay. Uh, why do you think Simon died? Are you following Simon? If I could gather my little followers now, they would instantly portray an ogre to you. But I'm not risking my friends' lives. Uh, how could the small children help me? Last week, the children played escape with their grandfather. They came back from the game scared. We didn't talk to anyone, we held hands. They were silent all the time. And recently, they began to draw a terrible picture. Perhaps it was because Simon felt trouble. Uh, show. First, in the usual manner, as usual, they draw friends and acquaintances. But if you look closely, you can see that the terrible is dissolved among them. Devoid of a torso, invisible, multi-headed, consisted of all um, depicted in the, in the picture. Uh, <sighs> How is it consisted of all the picture? How's the college? I told them to burn these drones. They inspired fear. And most importantly, thousands of children drew the same thing, as if by arrangement. It was some th as if someone else's will was guiding them by hand. These are very scary pictures. The children tearfully showed the what they had done, and I threw it out into the fire. In vain. Uh, what do you think of Katerina? Good. Very much so. Oh, why? No one likes Katerina. They do not miss a single reason to reproach her. And they don't notice her pictures at all. Uh, what advantages do you see in her? The authorities did not spoil her, it. She's honestly trying to carry her burden. After all, someone has to keep the sky and protect us from the step. Do you think if she leaves, it will be easier for us? 
Yes, everything would perish. Uh, uh, why? We live in an unnatural world. It's like uh, under a dam. We could die any minute. When someone does this work, it seems that it happens by itself. And this is not so. You're very smart, Victoria. Call me Capella instead. Okay, Capella. How inopportunely everything happened. Yes, inappropriate. Okay, so we leave this place with some new stuff to do. If they want Capella, they want Alice for Fosk's blah. For block's sake. <laughs> Let's see what uh, Senor Blood had to say about his daughter. And it will be hard to get life back on track. <laughs> Are you spoiling your daughter in Victoria? Her sweet mother was resurrected. Yes, there is an inner force beating her. Huge. Children are now chasing her in a pack because they feel this power. You can hide it in your bosom. When she grows up, she can do whatever she wants here. That's it. People will follow her. Is she so popular with kids? They don't take her eyes off her day and night. They are afraid to miss the moment when this force finally breaks out. I am waiting for this hour myself. That's when we'll see who to leave the inheritance and who to entrust the city to. She gives the impression of a responsible girl. And... Yeah, not in a... It, sorry, uh, sudden Spanish, but he doesn't have any more options. Okay, so, and as it's customary, save the one, big blood, zero one, and off we go, next stop is Anna Angel and the Saburovs. You know, I actually missed going walking around this place quite a bit. Oh dear, it looks like this man has sunk into a new low. And yeah, I'll see myself uh, out of here because it, the pun was terrible. Uh, I'm sorry, I am so very sorry. It will happen again. <laughs> I'm awful with puns. And I do happen to love awful puns. Hello! Uh, shall we switch? Hmm. He has bandage. I think we're picking one, just in case. Because I do not trust what might happen with the thugs as soon as we get them. And here's Anna Angel uh, sporting a very different look from the ones we are accustomed to. And oh boy, that neck uh, its kind of terrifying and I cannot keep my eyes off it. Shall I sing you a song about the passing summer? I am Anna Angel, if you haven't been told about me yet. Can you sing? And even beautiful. Uh, I heard about you. Is Angel your greatest pseudonym? No, it's a surname. My ancestors are from the south. It is strange to meet the singer in poor neighborhoods. They don't like me in this city. It's a pity. If it wasn't for this circumstance, I would have stayed here forever. 
uh, why aren't you love? I don't know myself. It seemed like it should be the other way around. When I sing softly near the window, passers-by stop to listen to the song. And if I try to talk to them, they avoid me like I am the plague. <sighs> I won't avoid you. How oh, good. I hope I don't hear you sing again. Is this man already dead? You don't have to be a doctor to see it. He scared me so much. Bursting here, covered in blood. Look at the terrible wounds inflicted on him. It was as if they deliberately beat him in such places it snorted to damage his body more. Look, the tendons are cut. Who could have done this? Uh, someone who knows a lot about anatomy. I didn't quite understand what he was saying. He was like a drunk, delirious. After all, now there's a hunt everywhere for the murderer of Simon Kane. Either he was mistaken for this killer, or either he was hunting the killer himself. It was the killer who inflicted such terrible wounds on him, yes? <sighs> Judging by the classes, oh, sorry, I don't know what got to, to myself to pronounce this so terribly. Let's try again. Judging by the clothes, this is a worker. We need to take him to the mortuary. They will surely be able to identify him. <sighs> we don't have any mortuary. If a person dies, his relatives bury him immediately after the memorial service. Since I've been living here, no one has ever killed anyone. Uh, okay, w w what should we do now? Just don't call anyone. Please, I beg you. The thing is, if they find a dead man in my house, it's very difficult to explain, but it will definitely, definitely tell you when I have the time. Honestly, I didn't kill him. And I couldn't have mutilated him so terribly. I'm not saying it is your fault. It will come to mind. There will be those who say that this blood is on my hands. They only need a reason. And they will turn things around so that I myself will be forced... Uh, just... Forced to admit that this blood is really on my hands. No! Just help me bury him. You have a spark of humanity in you. Tell the cemetery caretaker that there's a dead man in my house. And who is the cemetery caretaker? Since the caretaker died, that's also a bad story. In general, now his daughter is looking after the cemetery. Her name is Grace. She is generally taciturn. She was even considered dumb. In fact, she's Dutch, but she's kind. She's an angel. If you tell her, she will take care of this poor man as if she were alive. I mean, as a native. Okay, Anna. I'll bring Grace here and I'll help you to get rid of this dead one without asking too many questions. But in the near future, I hope to hear an entertaining story from you. Anna Angel had connections in funeral affairs. Getting rid of the body's nervous and troublesome work. The maiden race, the cemetery muse, can help Anna with the appropriate orders. And yeah, we have find a caretaker care care girl named Grace at the city cemetery. It doesn't look like Simon's killer broke into Anna's apartment. I agreed to help the girl to get rid of the dead. She has evil eyes, but she's not guilty of the crime. Yeah, she has. She totally has evil eyes. Okay. So we're safe. Day one. Anna zero one.
and off we go to check on the Sauroffs. And we'll see. Because as soon as we finish with the Saburovs, we have a whole lot of things to do in the south of the city. And here is Mr. Commander. Ominous events have not darkened our systems since last summer. The country has healed its wounds after the war. The province has revived uh, trade relations. Astrologers did not foretell anything bad. Do you take into account the opinion of astrologers? Sometimes I have to. Are you an astrologer? Oh boy. <laughs> Dumb question, Daniel. Dumb question. I am the ruler. Astrology interests me, but allowing the stars to influence my decisions is an unacceptable luxury. We have to act based on the actual circumstances. Do you share my point of view? Completely. For some reason, my wife really wanted to talk to you. She claims it is important. The matter is urgent. Where I can find her, she is in the western part of the mansion. The entrance is on the other side. Thank you. Okay. Save. Day one. Saburov. Zero one. And off we go to see Katarina. And here's darling dear Katerina. The door must end with the death of one of the opponents. This is the right way to look at the fight. After all, the confrontation of the two forces somehow turns a battle of good with evil. Why are you telling me this? I don't mean anything metaphysical. I mean a very specific fight. You were one of his... of his participants, Spatula Dankowski. Do you prefer to play on the side of good or vice versa? Uh, I prefer to win. <laughs> These are the words of a warrior. I, I sincerely, sincerely wish your victory, Bachelor. Although I do not believe that it is possible to win this fight at all. Thank you. You're a brave man, Bachelor Dankowski. Why? The fight with the ogre is unlikely to end with your victory. Uh, fight is a stronger word. I'm only providing Georgi with all the possible assistance in finding the killer. <laughs> I'm sorry to upset you. You have to fight for destruction. Even if... <sighs> if it should be understood in a figurative sense. The continuation... It's unambiguous. If you don't figure out who he is before nightfall, <laughs> he will kill you. H how do you know all this? I'm a clairvoyant. What is the nature of your visions? <laughs> That's not what you should be interested in right now. You should be interested in how many minutes you have left. 
Not so much at all. I'm not throwing around predictions. Ask the residents of our city how often and how accurately they come through. I wish you good luck, doctor. I beg you to take my words seriously. Uh, okay. A fine note before Nightfall who kills Simon Kane and prepare for the inevitable meeting with the killer. And uh, yeah, Katerina has something more for us. You are a doctor, Daniel Dankowski. And even a wonderful doctor. You are a, l a luminary of medical science. At least, that's what I've heard about you. And all the residents of our city know that a famous doctor is coming here. Can't you do me a favor? You, you exaggerate my importance. A few years ago, cases of child mortality became more frequent here. Six people died in two weeks, about ten came down with serious illness. It alarmed us. I, unfortunately, then I could not understand the reasons. Suppose you started an investigation. It turned, it turned out that children die as a result of the game. Whoa, what kind of games were they? The children were playing, what did they call it? In general, there was some kind of medical game. He stole medicines from adults and made some kind of barbaric mess out of them. They poisoned each other with his hodgepodge. Then the game died down by itself. But recently, I heard that they were starting it again. Someone has already been poisoned. Um, how can I help you? Uh, I'm not an expert of poisoning. I can look at it, but... Somewhere in the city, there's a house. Either abandoned or, uh, or an, an, an inhabited. <sighs> there, they set up an infirmary for themselves. There they have a warehouse of these terrible mixtures. Please pretend you want to play with them. They may tell you a secret. Stop this game with your authority. I don't want babies to die again. Of course I will help you. How to find this house? I don't know. And I can see. I, I try to ask the children. But they don't trust us. They understand that they we will... We will immediately stop the game. That's why your rival was so successful. They will tell you. There's a girl here. Her name is Murky. I'll show you where she lives. I'll talk to her. Katerina seems to be adequately coping with the role of a ruler. Here lives baby bear Mishka. <laughs> The key to the mystery of a series of child deaths that took place five years ago. Caring Katarina foresees that the situation may repeat itself. Why? Find the orphan bear and ask her about um, the children hiding places. Just to make sure. What a torment. It is impossible to tolerate this. What's going on with you? The prophet is like a drunk. The more he tries to be sober, the more you can see how dry he is. Isn't it right? I notice it more and more often for myself. You know best. 
and she can be asked here about uh, yeah whoa about Maria Maria I'm scared when I think what times are waiting for a city when she grows up the terrible Nina was restrained by us, all of us together both Victoria and I and even the case themselves but the little ch uh, Capella <laughs> can handle it on her own I don't have long left Morphine will drive me to my grave before the deadline. Simon is dead. Victor loves his daughter too much. He sees in her a lost wife. All hope for Georgi. Understood. And let's see what she thinks about Capella. Younger children claims that even thinking about Capella is happiness. She is an embodied hope, a promise of fulfillment of desires that does not allow to f flow into into actual fulfillment, which, as a rule, disappoints because it is less than expected. Capella is able to fulfill wishes before they have time to wish. Understood. Let's see about Grace. Grace talks a lot with the dead. Sometimes sits in front of the grave and sings some songs. She makes night rounds, bring things to the graves. Sometimes quite unusual. For example, a carriage from a typewriter or a festive cake with lighted candles. She is very musical, but does not <coughs> play any instruments, sings fascinatingly beautifully, too intermittently, as if choking. Understood. And who is Georgi? Georgi sells in knowledge and secret sciences, which are traditionally given to women better than to men. It is a nightmare, my, a mighty man. He is encyclopedically educated. He knows mathematics. Uh, physics well understands astronomy the fact the fact that in this situation he's engaged in magic makes him respect his success in that field but I don't believe in rational calculation of rational things understood well now we have all we needed from Katerina and we save here because we do have a huge amount of things to do and here we are at the end of another video in which we have known more of the inhabitants of the town on Gorkon and we already made some progress on the missions of the day. Though uh, further will hopefully come in the next videos. See you!